skills, and safety. In this lesson, we're talking about scientific notation and significant digits. So why do we use scientific notation? Well, often in science, our numbers can be very large or very small. So for instance, the distance to the nearest star beside our own is four zero 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 kilometers away. And the mass of the Earth is this huge number right there. Scientific notation is a convenient way to make numbers easier to work with. So for instance, this mass of the Earth can be condensed into 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, a much easier number to deal with. Scientific notation expresses a large measurement or a small measurement in the form a times 10 to the n. a is a number greater than 1 and less than 10, and n is a whole number which tells us how many times a decimal was moved. So for instance, the distance to Proxima Centauri in scientific notation. So for instance, let's take a look at the distance to Proxima Centauri in scientific notation. In decimal form, we have this number right here. So where's the decimal? The decimal is located right at the end. So if it's not written, it's going to be at the end. Where would you put the decimal to make this number between 1 and 10? We'd have to put the decimal right here between the 4 and the 0. 4 is between 1 and 10. So your A value is 4.0. So that's half of our number so far. How many decimal places did you move the decimal? That was 13 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times. Now, the other thing you gotta keep in mind is when the original number is more than 1, the exponent is positive. This number right here is more than 1, so our exponent is positive, and our final answer becomes 4.0 times 10 to the 13. Positive and negative exponents, or n values. So what's the difference between these two numbers, number 1 and number 2? Well, number 1 is obviously a very large number, while number 2 is a very small number. If we simply continue doing what we've learned so far, both would be 8.0 times 10 to the 9. We'd move the decimal 9 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you can see our n values would equal 9 and 9. But that's not correct, because these are two vastly different numbers. When you have anything times 10, you're multiplying it by 10, therefore making it larger. If you multiply something by 10 to the negative 1, you're dividing it by 10, making it smaller. We need to keep this in mind when writing our numbers in scientific notation. If our original number was greater than 1, our n value is positive. So for instance, 100 is greater than 1, and it becomes 1.0 times 10 to the positive 2. If our original number was less than 1, our n value becomes negative. 0 0.01 becomes 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2, because 0 0.01 is less than 1. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and find a and n for this number right here. Our a value becomes 9.02, because that's where we can move our decimal to make this a number between 1 and 10. How many times did we move it? We moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So that's the 8. Was our original number greater or less than 1? It was less than 1. This is a very small number. Therefore, our answer becomes 9.02 times 10 to the negative 8, because our original number was less than 1, so we got that negative right there. So try this question. Choose the correct scientific notation for 28,750.9. Okay, so you have your number. Let's walk through it. Our A value is going to be 2.87509, because that's the number between 1 and 10. We're going to move our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So you know it's going to be times 10 to the 4. And then we need to decide whether this number initially was greater or less than 1. It's greater than 1. So we know our number is a positive 4, and our answer becomes C. 2.87509 times 10 to the 4. So let's try this one. Write this number, 289,800,000 in scientific notation. Okay, so how do we do this? We need our A value. Our A value, again, is going to be 2.898. That's in between 1 and 10. We're going to move our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So times 10 to the 8. And it's positive because this number here is greater than 1. So that's our final answer right there. Now, if you have a number that looks like in scientific notation, like this one here, but you'll notice it isn't quite in scientific notation. The A value is not between 1 and 10. To solve these problems, we're going to pretend that times 10 to the n isn't there, and then add it at the end. So number 1, remove the times 10 to the 7 for now, and work with 322.2. Convert 322.2 into scientific notation, so that gives us 3.222 times 10 to the 2. And then we're going to add our exponents together to get your final exponent. Initially, we had 7 as an exponent. Now we have 2 as an exponent. 7 plus 2 is 9. So our final answer becomes 3.222 times 10 to the 9. Pause the video and try these two questions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the times 10 to the 9. We're going to put it off to the side. We're going to say plus 9 because we know to put our exponent in together after. We're going to work with 234.6. Now to find this in proper scientific notation, we're going to move our decimal to the left two times and we're going to get an A value of 2.346 times 10 to our two times we moved it to the 2. Now we're going to add our exponents. We're going to say plus 2 plus 9 is equal to plus 11. So our final answer becomes 2.346 times 10 to the 11. Now we're going to do something similar for number 2. We're going to take this guy right here. We're going to move it off to the side. Now we're going to say plus 4, because we know we're going to have to add something to that after. 
and we're going to just deal with 0 0.0642. Now to find this one inside of notation, we're going to move our decimal to the right one two times, and we're going to get an A value of 6.42 times 10 to the 1 2, but we're not quite done. This number here is less than 1, so that's going to be a negative 2. So now when we add our exponents, it's going to be plus 4 plus negative 2, which is equal to plus 2. Our final answer becomes 6.42 times 10 to the 2. Check your understanding. Which option below correctly shows 531.42 times 10 to the 5 in scientific notation? Pause the video and try it out. So we're going to take the times 10 to the 5 off of the side. We're going to say plus 5. Then we're going to deal with 531.42. We're going to create our A value by moving our decimal to the left one two times. And we're going to get 5.3142 times 10 to the number of times we moved it, which is 2. We're then going to add that plus 5 and plus 2 and we're going to get plus 7. So our final answer is going to become 5.3142 times 10 to the 7. And that's F. Going from scientific notation to decimal form. So now we got to go the other way. So remember, if our n value is positive, your number will be greater than 1. Therefore, you move the decimal to the right and place zeros in any extra spots. 1.2 times 10 to the 3, we're going to move our decimal to the right 3 times. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to fill those spaces in with zeros, which gives us 1,200. If our n is negative, our answer is going to be less than 1. Therefore, you move the decimal to the left and place zeros in any empty spots. 1.2 times out of the negative 3, we're going to go 1, 2, 3. We're going to put zeros in there, and we're going to be left with 0 0.0012. Now, you don't need to remember left and right. What you do need to remember is that this number right here is a small number. It's a number less than 1. Therefore, we have an exponent of negative. This one is greater than 1. Therefore, its exponent should be positive. So you need to go back and double-check your work and make sure that everything lines up properly. So now pause the video and express both these questions in decimal notation. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. We're going to move our decimal to the left. This negative means we're going to have a small number to begin with. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Put our decimal back in. Fill in these with zeros. And we're going to get a final answer of 0 0.00018. 4.58 times 10 to the 6. Times 10 to the 6 means it's going to be a big number. So we're going to move our decimal to the right. We're going to go 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, fill in these with zeros, and we're going to get 4, 5, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that's our final answer. So pause the video and try these five examples. Here are the answers. Make sure that your answers line up with these, and if you made any mistakes, make sure you go back and figure out where your mistakes were. Significant digits, or significant figures. Significant digits represent the amount of uncertainty in a measurement. Any digit that is measured or estimated will be considered significant. So, for example, the length of something is between 15.7 and 15.8. We estimate it to be 15.75, and that's what you can see right here with this measurement. Now, the first two digits, the 15 and the 7, are certain, but the last digit, the 0 0.05, was estimated. Therefore, the measurement 15.75 has four significant digits. Now, how do we know how many sig digs there are? There are some rules. Number one. All non-zero digits, 1 to 9, are considered significant. So 123 has 3 significant digits. 23.56 has 4 significant digits, and so on. Number 2. Zeros between non-zero digits are also significant. 1,207 has 4 sig digs. That 0 counts. 120.5 has 4 sig digs, because that 0 counts. Number 3. Any zero that follows a non-zero digit and is to the right of the decimal point is significant. We've actually measured that zero to the right of the decimal point, so we need to include it. So, for instance, 12.50 has four significant digits because we've measured that zero to be a zero. 60.00 kilometers has four significant digits also because we've measured these two zeros. If we didn't measure them, then we would just simply write it as 60. That has less significant digits than 60.00. Number four, zeros used to indicate the position of the decimal are not significant. 500 only has one sig dig. These two zeros here are not considered to be measured. If they were, we would put a decimal to the right of the last zero. Since we don't, they're just there as placeholders, so that the number is 500 and not 5. The 0 0.325, we don't count this 0, because that's just showing where the decimal place is. So it's 3 significant digits. And 0 0.00034, these 3 are not significant, and therefore the number only has 2 sig digs. Any 0 to the left of a non-zero digit isn't significant. That's one thing to keep in mind. Easiest way to remember it is that. Number 5. All counting numbers have an infinite number of significant digits because we are certain of the exact number. If I look on the ground and I see six apples, I can be infinitely sure that there are six apples. If I count ten students in the room, there are ten students, and that is to an infinite number of significant digits. There's not 10.0001, it's 10.0 forever. 
And that concludes our lesson on scientific notation and significant digits.